Welcome to Ariba training today. We are going to discuss on the Ariba purchasing approval and integration with SAP. These are the table of contents that we will be covering in our session. We discuss on the creation of requisition, SRM Ariba integration using Ariba catalog from the SRM system, different buying options like spot buy and punch out catalog and how we can add it to a card and proceed to checkout. We will also discuss a bit on the catalog kit and how can items be bundled together and what will be the scenario like. We'll also discuss a, a couple of things on the purchase order status and how it moves into a different status each time. We'll focus on the Ariba approver on how we could add the watcher and the approver and also an ad hoc approver and uh, the different single approver or group of approvers that the functionality that Ariba provides. We'll discuss also on how to approve, reject, edit, or enter in approval comments before sending the PO further. Uh, we also have a look at the invoice posting for both the contract and a PO based uh, scenario and discuss on the Ariba integration with SAP using standard extractors, how we can export the master data and what do the CSP files look like after they've been downloaded and the process further. So let's move on and see how we can create a requisition in the system. If you see here, we uh, select this create option and click on the requisition uh, drop down to select that and create start creating a requisition. We can also select an add item in the SRM system, goods and service catalog or whatever catalog is integrated. Move to the next site where you can choose the product that you are searching for. Click add to cart and then finally a proceed to checkout button appears that will take all these line items that you've ordered onto the SRM system and update the different fields of SRM accordingly. This is how the integration of the SRM shopping cart is done using an Ariba catalog. So let's move ahead and see the spot buy option. It allows a user to purchase non-source item. It also allows you to provide the list of Ariba network suppliers. Those items that are not covered by an existing suppliers are a part of this process. When your company decides to engage with a spot by vendor, it can either enable or disable the functionality using the admin configuration and an approval may also be configured that gets triggered whenever any user buys a spot by product from a vendor which is not already a part of your organization. It also provides you access to a wide area network of suppliers. Next is the punch out catalog. As you see here, uh, from the Adiba system, order a PO or a shopping cart and using that, it goes and takes you to the Ariba network and further to the supplier's website. Now, this could be something like a staples website where they maintain all their products. And when the Ariba system takes you to the staple website, it also provides you a way back so that you can select from the supplier catalog any item that you would like to have and then this sends it back to the Ariba system. Just how we saw a couple of slides before, in an SRM Ariba integration, it goes it goes all the data with all the data it goes back to the SRM system. However, it, if it's not SRM and if it's ECC directly, which is integrated with the Ariba, it will go back to the ECC system. Okay, so next is the catalog kit. It is the ability to group items and services as a single catalog entry. It is created from existing catalog items like a new employee hardware kit or software packages, licensing services and it can also be created as catalogs by administrator that will restrict individual selling of those items but will always be a group. It will be helpful in case of ease of navigation for the new users and it will also be helpful if you would like to discuss more with your uh, suppliers as to what items they can bundle to what items they would prefer to be bundled together that saves a lot of costs on the transportation and gives you a bulk discount. Here is a purchase order status. If you see the different status that moves through, it will fall into the composing status as soon as the process is initiated. Once all the documents are complete and all the data is filled in, it will move to the next status called submitted. Submitted status is nothing but a status which is called as abating approval in SAP. When it is approved, uh, the document would then be in the status ordering, which is a couple of minutes if it's an Ariba network supplier and then the status ordered, which means it has been sent to the supplier. 
It also has status like receiving and received, wherein the, rece uh, the supplier has already initiated the sending of the goods and when it is fully received, it will change the status to receive and that will mark the closure of the PO. It also has options like uh, cancelling or cancel after you've ordered. That will depend on how much amount have you've ordered and what is the invoice or the PO or the GR raised against it. That will help a user to decide whether they really want to cancel it or not. Also, if uh, you once you submitted the PO, if it, instead of going to the approved status, the approver can deny it and that means it will go into the status denied. Any changes to an audit status or to a submitted status by withdrawn or edit button will take it back to the composing status and the process would follow again. Let's see the Ariba parallel and serial routing. When you click on the show approval flow for any document, you would see a list of parallel and serial routing which means a user will have access to approve from the purchasing agent only when somebody called Archie Rooney has approved it the serial approver however the purchasing manager's approval is independent of whether these people have approved it or not so this is called a parallel processing in scenarios where you would like two levels of approval both are independent of each other it makes no sense to keep holding the work of other in order to meet the deadline for the first one so uh, this is a highly beneficial method when you are looking to configure and save some time in terms of in configuring the parallel processes then uh, the next slide is for adding an approval you can add it as an approval as a watcher and uh, also uh, by adding a parallel approver from the node here it lets you add an approver okay now if you would like to add an ad hoc approver to the chain you would click on any of these links here wherever you would like the approver to be added and uh, you can make the approver either an approver or a watcher a watcher is someone who is not responsible for really approving any of the documents they are only needed to be able to aware of what is being approved and uh, to make them understand the processes. So what you see here right now is an ad approval request where Arnold is asked, added as a watcher in this case. So the approval chain would still be dependent on these approvers uh, who are going to approve to make it finally from submitted status to a approved status. After these all you approvers have approved it. Okay, uh, so this is how uh, again a parallel and serial approver would look like. From a system perspective, it's always advisable that you add uh, users as a serial approver if you if the actions are dependent on the doc approval or decision of the first one. So these are the watchers and the approver in an approval chain. As you can see, the status moves from submitted to the approved status. These are again a single user and a group of user that are pending approval for the document. Now when you have all the documents and approval, uh, when a user selects the work item assigned to them, they can either click on approve, deny or edit. If they do so, they should understand that this will be based on the system configuration and all approval levels might not have an option to edit the PO actually. So they'll only have an option to approve it or deny it but not the other buttons. So once they do that it will be asking you for some approval comments whether you've accepted or rejected it and if you would like to send it to the supplier you can check this box and finally click on OK to send it to the supplier. Ariba also can help you create an invoice again in a similar manner as before but this time for a uh, either a PO based or a contract based invoice so in this case we are creating an invoice for a PO based scenario where you would enter the PO purchase order number from here via drop down and enter manually the supplier invoice number when we do that we see that you can click on done after your PO gets selected and also add any additional charges or taxes or discount or withholding uh, taxes that are uh, supposed to be added and uh, enter the value here for the quantity or the price if you would like to update it 
you can also do the import import accounting export accounting copying a particular line item or deleting them once we added the charges called as the shipping charges with the particular amount and click on add it will add the shipping charges to the total of your base amount which is what you've entered here and when you click on the update state update button it will update the total and click on submit to submit it this is how a submitted invoice would look like in a uh, Ariba system where you have the invoice number already and it will also be shown in your my documents list where you will see the recent list of documents being updated by you this is the contract based invoice a contract based invoice is important because sometimes it can be even a manual invoice where the contract has been initiated but a supplier has already provided the services but not an invoice so if you would like the AP team or uh, accounts payable team or the vendor master data team to speed up the process you can just start initiating the invoice in this case uh, you can select the contract number as you can see here and enter the amount and ensure that it matches the invoice sent by the supplier since we are doing a manual work here so it's always advisable to do a double check these are the cases where the supplier has either not agreed to migrate to the Ariba network or uh, it was a manual invoice sent by the supplier what the invoice looks like when it is submitted it will uh, give you the invoice number in the invoice submitted page as well as this uh, options to print view the status of your request or to add labels to be able to tag this document and uh, then you can create a same time of request by copying the data and go to the home page okay, so and once the invoice is submitted we are now going to discuss on the invoice reconciliation when you come to the invoice reconciliation you will see a tab called assign to me uh, all the invoices would be assigned to a particular person in the AP team who would then be actually doing the reconciliation work then you click on actions you will see a drop down which has three uh, options like accept the invoice amount you accept the expected amount or you defer to someone else if you think there are some issues in this and it needs to be further verified by someone who actually ordered or maybe their manager so once you do that for each of the line items like there is a shipping variance here shipping charges and header levels do not match or there could be some other variants like a PO catalog price variant so it will list out all those things here and identify it as an exception as well once you click on the accept invoice it will further now accept the invoice amount and then you can invoices now reconcile you can just submit it so it will go to a particular approver in case it requires an approval based on your system configuration or it will go back either to the person who submitted the request okay so when we go back here to the invoice status uh, when you open a particular PO you will see all the information related to the PO like the order that you carried out the receipt with line to this PO 60399 as well as the invoice status now the particular invoice status for this invoice is status of paying which means that uh, the vendor has still not been paid but there are some internal processes which needs to be completed before it is actually paid out to the vendor so whenever uh, somebody from the vendor team or a contact person of the vendor inquires about the status of the invoice this is how usually a person checks it for their own PO they check what is the current status in the reconciliation section and whatever status is shown here is the actual status when it is sent out to the vendor the status becomes paid okay another way to find out uh, how you could analyze the invoice reports and carry out more meaningful data analysis is by using the pre-packaged report section when you go to create pre-packaged report here you will find there is a bias settlement report which is a uh, one of the main uh, pillars for doing invoice reconciliation and checking the status of the invoices when you right click and click on open you will see the invoice summary report now invoice summary report when you click on it it will show you these options where you could read the report or export or do it in the background now i'm planning to click on the view report by filling out most of my selection criteria here and then it comes up like this you can either view it as a pivot table or you can view it as a chart or a dashboard so it will give you an exact uh, distribution of how the data is has been assigned for a say for a common supplier that you are looking for or what is reconciliation status and etc 
this is how the chart version of it looks like so these are the ones which are unclassified probably which is what uh, invoice uh, team needs to further look at if they are not belonging to a particular section and if they have not been classified accordingly because it creates an issue in the report downstream and it's advisable that everything here should be classified correctly so if i move further down it will show me options to export it if you can see here there's after the selection of uh, the criteria that i filled in instead of clicking on view report you can click on the export button and when you do that it will further export it to an excel template after it has gone through all these steps now it's always advisable to have your browser plugins and add-on like activex enabled otherwise it would create an issue and would not allow you to download Ariba team does support that and tell you on what is the compatible version but uh, this is something that needs to be taken care of by the admin team as well as the IT support team of your company so the steps that will be taken through is in contacting Excel downloading the template waiting for any query downloading the data configuring layout and finally when it's all these steps have been looped through it will come to the done and then you will have the dump in your excel of the data it will also create these tabs like the bar chart the pivot pie and the chart table you can carry out meaningful analysis and investigation from your side as well as do any kind of further investigation that needs to be done in order to reconcile those invoices which have some status issues which have some exceptions that needs to be handled when we do an Ariba integration with SAP, we have a standard extractor program called ARBA Master Data Exports. So the screen for that looks like something like this, where we have Ariba on demand uh, option, where you can select the procure to pay, procure to order, and sourcing and contracts. If you select any of the three radio buttons shown here, it will automatically give you a list of master data for export. As you can see here, there are some options like organization data, accounting data, etc. You can select that and then just execute it which will then be updated onto your file location that you maintain as a part of your config parameter. This is what the entire master data looks like. It will consist of the accounting data, the create application configuration date, the supplier related data and the user related data. Once this is done, it will create the CSV files as you can see from the program run shown here and uh, based on this information you can then schedule it to be picked up by a pi system and run as a bad job in from the ecc to the ariba network okay so with this we've come to the end of the session let's summarize what we discussed you can add to the cart or you can proceed to check out whatever the option of creating a requisition uh, of how you can integrate an SRM and Ariba system by creation of a shopping cart using Ariba catalog from the SRM system and ordering the data so that it flows from the Ariba catalog back to the SRM system as we ref as we shown in the screenshot. Uh, you will also have a look at the different you also have to look at the different buying options like the spot buy and the punch out catalogs through which you can order either directly from the Ariba system or going to the supplier's website and then integrating it back to the SRM or the ECC system. We added a couple of items to the cart and proceeded to check out. Catalog kit are nothing but bundled items that a user can order. These are configured as a kit based on the admin user uh, understanding of the data and they can club different items together in order to ease the navigation for the end users. Then we have the purchase order status. Uh, purchase order status was the different status to which it moved like submitted, received, receiving, ordered, etc. Uh, then we had the Ariba approval where we could add a watcher and an approver as well as an ad hoc approver that could be added to any step in the approval workflow. We also saw how we could have the different single approver and group approver as a part of the approval workflow chain and uh, the way we can approve, reject or edit the work item as well as enter your approval comments and send it to be able to send it to the supplier. Then we discuss more on the invoice posting where the contract and PO based invoices can be created and accordingly sent to the supplier via Ariba network or if it's a third party supplier then via CXML or other mediums uh, to the supplier network. Lastly, we discussed on the Ariba integration with SAP, 
and how we could use the master data extractors in the ECC system to download as a CSV file and then be able to use it and send it to the Ariba system via PIs that schedule it as a batch job. So with this we've covered most of the topics related to the Ariba integration and procurement scenarios. Thank you for your time today. I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you.